The Phantom? You got pooped on with the Phantom? No, I don't get to <laughs> Wait, have you seen me play? I You're nasty. Had... Wait, yo, John. Yeah. From when you watched my stream, did I not improve a ton? You improved. You still aim too low. Okay. That's what all console kids do when they first start playing. But I aim higher, though. But, like, my strategy is there. Yo, I will tell you guys this. I know both of you guys yeah, play a lot of PC. We're live right now. Yeah, we just went live. It's fine. Okay. We yeah. take a few minutes every beginning, let people load in. I'm going to tweet it out and stuff. Um, well, like, it, it, they can hear us. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, it just kind of starts hot. Like like, Ro like Rogan's show, he just starts hot. But, uh, dude, with PC games, like, I know you guys, you play CS, right, Clay? Yeah. Well, you used to? Plays. Bro, I, <laughs> bro, I never used to, gr I used to play, for, like, for fun and stuff. But since, like, playing Valorant decently a lot, like, my search and destroy mind, I swear, is next level, bro. I swear it's not a myth. It actually makes you better at S and D. Well, I mean, why does my video look like garbage? I told you, it looks like shit. <laughs> how do I fix that? Your Discord quality is cheeks, bro. How, how do I? How do I fix my... is it Me too. Um, just no, John. You're all right. Uh, I would just turn it off and on, Clay. Whoa, he hit you with the day one. Well, I have it. Yeah, that was like IT tech support. <laughs> I have a. Uh, I use a, a an actual camera. There you go. You're fixed, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I use an actual DSLR camera for my stuff. You look like a rock star, bro. It's all, all right, good. Fuck it, right? It's I the stream. I look like ten pixels, dude. <laughs> Here, you want me to end the call and restart it real quick, boys? I. Or maybe I'll call it. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let me uh, end it. Will it change your camera positioning? Uh, no, it should be alright. Well, I think John needed to leave. And he never left the call. Wait, John never left? Oh, your quality is amazing now, bro. Oh, yeah, I left. Turn bang, left. bang. Okay, now let me just reline you guys up and, you know, we'll get to going here. Look how good you guys look, bro. It's honestly insane, handsome, dude. Handsome fellers, bro. That's all you can say. <laughs> For real. Yeah, good good, good mind, Clay. That's why you're a COD champion. All right, well, welcome to the stream, everybody. Uh, let's get the tweets out. Let's get this thing started. Bang, I just tweeted it. For those of you already loaded in here, we appreciate you guys very much. <laughs> you guys are the real ones. I think Clay's drinking an IPA. John's drinking what? What type? What's your beverage of choice? Oh, this is a uh, Pinot Noir. Oh, okay. 1967. Northern okay. Californian grape. Bo bougie. And I have a <laughs> Bud Light Seltzer, lemon lime. It's not bad, dude. These but these are better in claws, in my opinion. Oh my goodness. Their sounds low. I will fix it. This is a jank show, dude. Bang. They're loud now. All right. Well, what's up, Clay? Welcome to the show. I think this is your third time on here. Um, you watch pretty much every episode though, so I appreciate your continued support over the years, dude. And uh, you had a hell of a weekend, bro. Hell of a weekend. Hell of a. Honestly, the last year or so has been insane for you. Like you hadn't won in a super long time, and then over the last year you've been on pretty much the best team for the last full year, which is insane to think about. Like in like the history of your career, where does like th this year? Uh, stand up in terms of like your entire career um, Well first thing first thanks for having me on again, you know, mm -hmm. I appreciate you guys putting out content You know for the COD community and continue doing it. It it, it matters a lot. So thank you guys for doing this um, Yeah, man, it, it feels great like it, It's a nice little resurgence at what people thought was gonna be the end of my career and then to have it be where I'm at now and, and to be in the spot that I'm in now it, it It's super vindicating in a way it just validates a lot of uh a lot of the stuff I thought about myself and a lot of the stuff I thought about continuing competing. So it's one of those things where I'm just happy that it's at where it's at. I'm happy where it's at where it, what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm happy where I'm at right now. You know, it's awesome. I, I'm really enjoying it. It's crazy because there's a point last year where you guys like, I, I want to say you guys got last before yeah, you dead made last. the switch. Yeah, dead last. And it's like, I don't want to play with who, I don't want to play with this. There's a lot of turmoil in the United camp. And then somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in the middle of there, you guys just... You guys just turned up, and now things are looking pretty damn nice for you over there in Dallas. They were legitimately yeah, about to break up, dude. No, yeah, I the, mean, the core I of us for sure. The core, the core for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 
That's <laughs> that's an incredible turnaround in just one year's time, right? Especially coming from a time when, like, I guess I want to say since when was the last time you won before before Best that warfare? <laughs> oh my god! Still, to be fair, people used to you know there was that like clay meme roast thing about the days since he won, but I would take clay spacings for sure in all that time where he didn't win. So to be fair, he was still in the mix. He just wasn't getting a chip. Yeah, oh, and yeah. That, that's like... that's that's one of the things that I was pretty proud of too is that like I stayed competitive. Like if you look at my average placing over the amount of events I've played at and stuff, like it's still pretty damn good. So like <clears throat> even though I wasn't winning, I was still making enough cash to make it worthwhile and also like getting placements that I thought weren't like, you know, I I should stop doing this placements. Like once you start getting top 12, top 16 over and over and over like like it's done, you know. Yeah, that's when you start hitting up the analyst guys and like, yo, you guys, you guys looking for anyone? Yo, we've tried to get Clay a few <laughs> times, dude. Yo, Clay, towards at the end, of, what was it like middle last year when that stuff was happening? We, we, I reached out to you. I know a few other people reached out to you too. They're like, yo, listen, we gotta get Clay on up here, bro. Have the squad. <laughs> and that that's something I'm also thankful for. You know that I've gotten to a position in my career where I've you know networked with enough people, enough people know who I am, and enough people want to hire me to where like. I never felt like I would be out of a job if I quit competing, which is something nice to have like a fallback on. Like I know there's some people in the industry that would have my back and would, would get me a job regardless of where it is. So that's always yeah. super nice. To that's have. something that I try to preach to a lot of players that are still going now because they think that it's going to last forever and you, you just don't know what's going to happen. And I'm like, what happens if you just get dropped tomorrow? Like yep. what happens next year? Like, do you have you talked to anyone? Have you, have you networked with all you go to events all the time or at least, you know, pre, uh, quarantine yeah. you go to events all the time and you just hang out in the lobby with the same people all the time like go talk to someone that matters and <laughs> dude that uh that's way. a huge worry in like all of esports i remember watching mark cuban talk about that way back because i used to be worried about that all the time when like uh like aw hit and then after aw like black ops 3 and stuff and my career wasn't going that well i was like shit what am i gonna do and stuff started like happening you just gotta like put an effort in and you know, everybody doesn't get lucky, but you can get lucky if you put the work in. But, like, you're at a point where it's, like, way different than most other pros. Like, you've been around for so long, and you have no, you know so much, and you're such a huge asset. Like, you would be totally fine. But, like, for other pros and people, like, coming up, I look at some of them like, dude, you guys are not – you're doing the wrong thing, dude. You got to figure it out. Yeah, man. That's something that I preach to, to the young guys on my team. It's like, y'all need to be in front of a camera doing as many interviews as possible. Like, you need as many people as possible to understand, like, who you are, how you think, like, what you can bring to a team. Like, people need to hear you speak and hear you talk to even know who you are. And a lot of people are just like, nah, like, I don't care. I'm just here to win a chip. But, like, there's more to life than just winning Call of Duty championships. Yeah, it happens. You're remembered for You're remembered for if you win, like, 10. <laughs> if you don't win, like, 10, <laughs> then it's like cool dude nice <laughs> you know good job <laughs> but yeah so i mean and there's just some of the players some of the you guys know like, that just actually don't care like they know it's good for them but they legitimately just don't care they're just wired completely differently which is like i guess it works for some of them but i don't, I don't understand it but anyways talking about it, the it, wait go ahead it ter it terrifies me dude like what i'm gonna do after i'm done competing like i'm it genuinely shouldn't. I'm, I'm scared i think that you healthy. built up enough of a reputation you you're well spoken. Like everyone knows who you are. I don't think that you could be kept out of a spot where, like, even, let's say that Call of Duty esports even isn't even a thing. Like they would be dumb not to hit you up to work at a studio even to yeah. keep putting and out stuff for Call of Duty. I think you'd be fine. I appreciate you saying that. And I know, like, I, I feel like I put myself in a good enough position to to be in a good spot. But like, it's still scary as hell. Like I've been doing this as my full time job for eight years now. <laughs> like you know, like what I don't even know how to do anything else right now. So I, it's just. The thought of the unknown is scary. I you know believe. what's scary is, is this, be honest, is this the earliest you've woken up, like, daily, ever, since you started competing? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> Wait, I, and I, what time I, is that, though? No, I wake up at, like, 10 a.m. every day now, dude. 10, 30 max. Dude. Wow, that's like, a bl that's sleeping in for a lot of people, bro. Yeah, I know. Uh, literally, like, 98% of the yeah. world. <laughs> and I get that. I get that. But they also not staying up till 2 in the morning watching Netflix with their girls and stuff. You know, That's like, true. everyone goes to bed by 9 p.m. That's like, also I can a blessing, do it, though. But... No, it is. And, and I'm not saying it's not. But I, I feel like I'm getting old because, like, I enjoy waking up before, like, practice begins. So I have, Dude, like, a same. couple hours to do whatever I want before practice. It's Wait. not just wake up straight practice, you know? Wait, Clay, speaking about that, walk me through, like, your day. So, like, I feel like... Like for me, like sometimes I, I wake up consistently at like 8 a.m. 
And I don't even remember like the things I do during the day. I feel like a lot of fans are curious as to, like what a pro player does like in his day that wakes up early. So you wake up at 10 a.m. Like what's your day like until scrims? Because they start at what 2 p.m. for you or something like that. Uh, I'm, one, right? I'm central, so one. Okay. Um, oh, so then you don't have a ton of time, but yeah. I mean, it's honestly for me, a lot of my off time is spent playing other games, and I sh I'm sure you guys know that because almost every yeah. other COD pro plays other games, but mm -hmm. like. You know, especially during the quarantine and stuff, it's like wake up, you know, let my dog out, hang outside for like five or ten minutes just to try and like get outside and not just be in this chair all day. And then honestly, just whatever I'm feeling, if I want to catch up on Reddit stuff or if I want to catch up on, you know, YouTube ah. videos or whatever, like I usually spend a, like a, the first hour eating breakfast, just like going through the daily cycle of news or whatever it is. Um, mm. And then honestly, scrim start and then we scrim. You know, a lot of a lot of COD pros over exaggerate how much we scrim, but like normally it's like three, four, five hours, like around that range. And then, you know, once we're done, I, I'm one of the few players that's like, I'm done playing COD if I don't have to play COD. Like if I can scrim, if I can scrim with my team and and play and get better as a team, I'm all for it. Like I'm there and I'm I'm present, I'm motivated. But like as soon as it comes down to like me on my own playing pubs or tens or whatever it is, like. I genuinely don't enjoy it. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of just decompressing after that because, you know, practicing in a competitive um, environment for four or five hours a day, it really does like wear on you sometimes. And especially if like you aren't doing too well or if like the scrims aren't going how you want it or somebody woke up on the wrong side of the bed, you know, like it could be anything. <laughs> and it, it's just like, holy shit, like I need, I need an hour just to like sit here and like not do anything and not talk to anybody. So <laughs> that last part made me yeah. laugh because it's so true. Especially yeah. now with 5v5, like most of the time when we played in, it was always, my mic just go out. Oh, you're you good. Me? No, I can I, it. It was always, it was always 4v4. Just that one extra person added to the team who could just wake up and just not want to play or just be in a bad mood could actually just ruin the entire five hours, like Clay said, of scrims. And it's just like, God. dude, it was way worse back in the day, dude. People would yeah. literally get on and actually deliberately like sabotage so they could get off after the first scrim. <laughs> and like somebody would always go, all right, well, I don't even think it's point. It's like, there's no point to scrim right now. I'm getting off. And then they would just get off and like, all right, <laughs> like, all right, peace, dude. <laughs> that would happen to me all the time. That was horrible. But it seems like practice has gotten a lot better this year, dude. I wish I was, uh, I wish it was like this when I was playing back then. I would have been way better. We started at seven o'clock, bro. Seven o'clock, we started scrims. How the well, hell were we supposed to have a I life? I mean, think about, think about what the root of all of us gaming. You'd come home from school, and then I guess if you had homework or something, some people would do it, some people wouldn't. And then and then you get on and play. So it just naturally, we just continued that same schedule on forever. But nowadays, yeah. that doesn't exist. So I think like, it was like the West Coasters getting out of school at 3, yeah. so it's like 4, 5, 6 for most East Coasters, and they're not going to start playing right away. So, like, it just had to be, like, 7 Eastern. Like, that was the only acceptable thing that people could get on for. But I'm thankful that's not there anymore well, either. Dude. up until this year, you – well, I guess last year too kind of. But up until then, you literally, like, couldn't have a life outside of COD. Like, you couldn't just, like – go to dinner and stuff it was literally like how how you guys all in the chat are living right now like this is how you had to live as a cod pro for years like in quarantine like you couldn't leave the house you'd be you'd have to like go and do stuff in the morning and then it'd just be over you'd have to scrim but anyways let's talk about the event dude, dude Big... my cam still looks like ass bro we got to fix <laughs> oh can we all leave the call and call it back dude dude we could do it once more man for those of you watching audio we are on youtube as well so we gotta reset it for the cams um, all right, all right. Go Come ahead. on, everyone, back. leave the call. Play I got you. Back. I got you. I got you. We're gonna fix the, the camera, guys. I think his connection is cheeks right now, and his camera looks like crap. All right, Hello? so let me do the pop out again. Do I still look like shit? Uh, we'll see in a moment. Uh, it looks good now, I guess. Like better. I mean, I ah. think so. I think Discord's pooping the bed. I mean, I have three green bars right now on mine so i i'm good i have a thousand thousand Green bars like yeah, I don't at know the bottom at the bottom left about. it shows you video connected on your discord and yeah, I, have, I got i got I have three, three, three bars. bars bro 44 oh, ms too well shit dude wait you could see your your ping yeah oh, over over i got two <laughs> oh, oh my god you have two now, let's talk about the online cd <laughs> <laughs> all right now, let's talk about the online link the new format two msp <laughs> But it did get better though. That chat, it looks better yeah. to me, and the chat said it got a lot better. So, 
Yo, right, we'll, just roll, we'll roll with it now. Let's jump into it. Let's yeah, it. so you had a massive victory this weekend, dude. Um, put you guys at number one. Uh, you had a tough road. Like, we'll talk about the preparation, everything, and all that. But let's talk about the road, I guess, first. You played Optic, Seattle, Chicago, Atlanta. That's a tough draw. Like, let's talk Let's talk through it, starting with Optic. Like, how was that series? Do you remember it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, especially with the new format this year, it, it's – definitely easier to win tournaments and some like uh, how they grew the droops or drew all the groups at the beginning of the year um it's kind of just like randomized in a way but you end up with easier or harder pools and obviously a pool that has atlanta and chicago is going to be the hardest pool um so in our eyes we had an easier pool just because we didn't have to play any of them pool but in the end that doesn't matter because then you just go to bracket in a single limb and so it's like you kind of wanted them in your pool, so you didn't play them first round, so you could yeah. get further the tournament, get more points. Um, so, like playing Optic first, uh, especially you know with those group of guys that they have, you expect any moment that they're gonna start winning. Like it, it's just a matter of when, not like if. It's just like when are they gonna start winning, not if they're gonna start winning. Yeah. And I think that um, that's something I've kind of instilled into my group of guys is like treat every match like we're playing. Uh, you know the huntsman or like every match we're playing phase um don't underestimate any of these guys because everyone's out here trying to win everyone out here is putting in just as much if not more time than you and you know nobody's okay with losing so uh you know playing them and then especially with kind of how the vetoes went we were pretty happy with the maps that we got yeah and um i just think the the pressure that my subgroup puts up against a lot of these other teams is just like too much to overcome. Like I didn't even have that good of a series, but like the kids were just running rampant everywhere. So, um, you know, I felt like we were prepared and then in the Arklov search, they actually played really well and, and smoked us in the Arklov search. And it made me feel really uncomfortable, which is really hard to do in search and destroy. Like I just felt like nothing I did worked. I was just dying every time. Uh, I just couldn't get a rhythm. None of us could get a rhythm. And, um, you know, tying up a series 1-1, it's just like, okay, we have to win the Dom now. And then end up clutching out the Dom, and then the fourth map, we kind of just ran away with it. So um, it was tight, and I think they actually played really well and played us a lot harder than they have in the past. But um, I feel like just our map set is just way too strong right now. Yeah. Um, and, John, you could talk a little bit about that series as well. Like, what did it feel like um, for you guys going up against them? Like, what were you expecting and, like, going well, into the series? We, at, we actually do scrim Dallas a decent amount. Uh, they're just clearly to me they're the best team in the game right now and they showed it this weekend so congratulations to that first off uh, we knew that we'd have to win the Dom so both on land when we played them and in this online tournament both Doms were super close yeah it was very it and, was and Dallas just clutched up at the five end of both. points like, like it was it's happened both times and right they're a stronger hard point team than we are right now so we really needed to win that Dom I think to have a chance to win the series and we just didn't close out um Shotzi in particular he went crazy with a, like a 1.6 KD 1.62 I'm ooh, looking ooh. at it whoo hoo my bad. Them, god you bro you called him a bust at the beginning of this year whoa ooh. wait that's cap though it was Ant's job to do hot takes bro I'll thank you slide on Dude, that one. I swear is Clay one of the them. only they smart you, people they set in... you up All right, but yeah. you got set up bad <laughs> hey, that's fine, bro. It is what it is. Hey, but yo, hey, hey, real quick. How many views that clip get? Got a lot, bro. Got a lot, bro. That's what they want. People still bro. talking about it months later, bro. Yeah, see? See, it is what it is. And guess what, bro? It Either fueled way. Shotzi's fire and it created a story, guy, from bust to boom to yeah, MVP. Shout out to, shout out to Nameless for see that. See what one, I'm bro. saying, bro? Like, I just, incredible. for the Huntsman fans out there, I just, why is it not working for your boys, bro? I've been cooking them. I picked them to win, actually, the event prior to this, and they didn't. So I think I, put, I, think I just straight jinxed them. But anyways, yeah, so that series, that one could have went either way, honestly, Clay. It was scary. Like, when I first saw that series, I was like, whoa, Dallas? Because I thought Optic is just, like, not one of the good teams at all. I was like, dang, Dallas looks, like, a little bit weaker because the, the Dom was super close and then the Hackney was close. And I was like – and that was with players on Optic, like, not playing well. Like, Jake Apatige did not have a good series. Like, Kenny, like, was dragging their feet through that series. Um so I was like, dang, bro, Dallas isn't looking too good. Like, is there anything you guys did over the night, like, going into the next day, like, talked about to, like, improve for the next series or I'm, what? 
I mean, honestly, like if you look at all the games this year, almost from like any hard point or any Dom, they're all super tight. Like in Dom, sometimes people run away with it, but like the hard points in this game lend themselves kind of like World War II in a way to where the games are going to be close every time. And it's just about who at the end edges it out or who had enough lead to like, you know, just hunker down and, and win off it. And so I think that like, yeah, like a lot of people look at the close games and that was even a thing about us with like uh, versus Chicago and Atlanta on on land was like we didn't win a map. But if you look at all the maps, it was like five to ten point hard point, like that, around yeah. eleven search. You know, it, it's all super close. So I think that yeah, it might not have been as convincing as you want, but like a win is still a win, and and being able to clutch up at the end is like a trait that you have to have as a team. Like you have to have the clutch factor. Yeah, that's been in COD for a while, and in this game, like you have to have it, dude. Because like I'm even I'm scrolling through, and like I'm just recalling certain maps, and if you just look at the overview on like the the stat sheet, every hard point's within like 50 points, and most of them are like 25, which is insane, bro. That's stressful as hell, dude. Yeah, it <laughs> so is. I can't. I, can't well, I, I mean, other than World War II, I can't think of a game where the hard points were like that consistently. Like the game designed where it's just always going to be pretty close. Yeah, trait. Yeah. Think of that because. Black Ops 2 used to blow people out. Well, you blow people you out rotate them and win the anger yeah. battle. You win by. Whoa, well, hold on. <laughs> well, like we could talk about Black Ops 2 for a second. If we played it nowadays with what people know now, Clay, I think it would be a little kind of like this. No, because you we used to like if we were better at hardpoint, we would just blow a team out. But that was because like the way the maps were designed, like it was like like on slums, you were getting 60 down low and the other team was getting 60. You don't think it would be the same thing like what Dan said in the chat, like trade 60s again? No, like because feel... there's, also, there's also like the domination factor in those games. Like Clay could go and run off and get streaks and then break the next one. Oh, that's true. It causes yeah. like this domino effect of just being the better team. Yeah, and the war and machine you and stuff. That. You don't have that anymore. Yeah, there's just... Mm. No. <laughs> Now yeah, there, dude, it's trustful, bro. MP5 sliding in, trading, trade 60s. Let's go. Clutch up at yeah. the end. Get... I will say, <laughs> Dom was lit this weekend. All, like, a lot of, like, Dom, people hate on Dom, but, like, it was low-key lit this weekend. There was some sick Doms, dude. Yeah. I won't give too much away, but, like, dude, everyone used to just face smash B over and over and over and over and over <laughs> what, and on, over. On, and on then, like, on any map, and then okay. people get blown out by 60 to 80 because, like, they could just never break through. And people yeah. are finally starting to understand, like, wait. Maybe we shouldn't just smash our face into this wall every time. Like maybe we should try and go around or pitch yeah. or go for the home flag, you know. And it's gotten better. Dom has gotten better to watch. It's more enjoyable. I like teams just know what they're doing. Like as we like force people to play it, now they're starting to enjoy it. What's the general consensus consensus on that? By the way, I'm not as looped in as I was there. I like the players enjoying Dom more, or no? No. Not at all. <laughs> no, I, I don't know what's going on half the time. I'm just gunny up, go to my spot that I'm supposed to get, lock it down, bro. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in that game mode sometimes. <laughs> dude, no, it's crazy, dude. Like, Gunrunner like, Dom. follow it. How do fans follow it? Gunrunner Dom. Like, <laughs> Gunrunner Dom is toxic, dude. That map yeah, is toxic. I, uh, in our match for Seattle, so like, you, oh, you just call it map toxic. Yeah, th <laughs> that combination is toxic, dude. It is, dude. I like the things I see happen on that one. The chaos of that map. Wait, well, yep. dude, like you would think Ooh, Hackney would be barrel, worse. Out sea. Yeah, yeah, we all know at this at this point, it's not a secret amongst pros. <laughs> 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 um, oh my goodness! But moving on, the surge match. Let's go into that one. Started off down 0-1 um got a little bit worried and then you guys won three straight do you remember that at all yeah of course i mean um we were trying out some things in our vetoes and trying out some things in our map pool and and cave was one of those maps that we were pretty confident on and i honestly think we made like two or three mistakes um or we would have won that first map cave uh but you know we're playing seattle on, on cave where octane yeah yeah, Octane's been their best player for the past four months, five months by far. So like, why would we give him the opportunity to go off? But like, it was just one of those things we were trying out and we felt confident enough in the rest of the map set that like, let's try and see if we can win this against a team that's going to be hard to beat on it. And, um, you know, still made some mistakes, end up losing it. But it was one of those things we wrangled back. I think uh, the maps after that, um, that cave were just super good for us other than like, the Gunrunner Dom, a lot of people were questioning, yeah. but like we haven't played much Petro, like Dom at all, like especially on a land environment. I think we played them on it like twice, and they're the only people we played it on. I think Huntsman once, uh, but like 
everyone looks at map records like it's some crazy thing, dude. Like, oh no, they're five and zero oh on Gun Runner Dom, and it's like, yeah, that's over the course of four months There's against gorillas. teams that, yeah, that aren't us, <laughs> and, and, and like they're going to be overconfident, so we can use that against them and and kind of like play into that. And got, we knew that like that we have to be good at two Doms, like we have to be good at two of the Doms, and so like. Petro, we've been trying. Gunrunner, we've been trying, and we felt Gunrunner was a little better than our Petro right at, at that moment. So, yeah, um, we ended up having a crazy game versus him, dude. Like, that, like going back to the Dom thing. Like, we, at one point they had A, C, and we had B. One of them spawned back A, one of them spawned back C, and then another one spawned back A. And it's like, <laughs> what? Like, how are you supposed to read that at all? Like, you can't. And we just kept the gunnies up and kept winning gunfights when when we needed to. And and that's really was the the game like right there is when we won that dom um it was hackney hardpoint next and i think we actually had good side uh or it, i don't even remember if we had good side or bad side but i do know we broke p2 which i was mind blown from like I we actually broke p2 yeah <laughs> and was just like was like hell yeah we broke p2 like this game is over like if being, you can... in te- being in teams comms when they break p2 is crazy everyone's just so happy <laughs> yeah, dude, it's <laughs> impossible dude like yeah. it's sometimes impossible it has to have like the perfect circumstance has to happen. You have to get the perfect amount of kills. And uh, we broke P2 and I was just like, okay, we won the map, you know? So um, they played us tight. I honestly think they've gotten better, uh, but I just still don't understand what they're doing on that team. Like, yeah, why, what are they like, doing? Like, like they... Pander should not be playing. And, and I, I like the guy. I, li- I, yeah. like Ka- I like Casey, but like the performances he put yeah. up this weekend and against us, dude, like if they had an able. If they had a Nable, they're beating us. Yes, like, on that, on, you know, on that gun runner Dom. That, and, but most wait. time, players don't say that kind of shit about other people on other teams. Like he just should not be playing. Wait, no, yeah. for real though. On on that gun runner Dom, like they have a Nable, or like just in general, like do Panders. And I'm not even coming player. at him. I think Panders really good. Okay. I actually do, but like he performs consistently at a level underneath the player they dropped, and that's let the me, point. I'm making let me out. play devil's advocate. So they pick up, they pick Ian back up. Do they ever win a surge? I mean, do they ever win a search right now? They won. They won a couple. Of <laughs> no, 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 no. Do they ever win a search? Like, well, all right, they're the underdog in search now. If they play <laughs> okay. Ian, Wait. He played search with Ian. He uh-huh. averages like three kills a search for like the last. <laughs> Bro, listen. All I'm saying is, you're not getting a big enough jump in search and destroy from Pander to where like having him in having him over enable makes sense. Like enable is gonna make your team better at respawn. It's just, I just don't understand it at all. Like, I, I I honestly never got clarification as to, like, the true reasoning why they dropped him. Like, it, Yeah, and him saying, like, there was, like, the ultimatum. Like, if they bring him back now, the team is broken. Like, you can't yeah. bring him back now. I think it was a premature benching is what I think it was. And I think that um, if they're going to give anybody a shot, they probably should have given Proto a shot. You know, Proto has been playing on the fringe for a long time. I think, I, yeah. I mean, that's my personal opinion, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm not sure. I also I mean, think Enable has a lot of, like, he brings a lot to a team other than just search or, or whatever he does or objective. I think Ian's actually, like, a well-rounded player when a lot of people aren't. And so, like, I honestly, I don't know him. the team dynamic. Yeah, I, I don't know the team dynamic and stuff, so I can't speak 100%. It's just if my teammate was putting up numbers like that consistently, I'd be super worried, you know? That's yeah, good. 100%. Sense. Ian's been playing at a high level in multiple titles for, like, since he was like a child like he, he, you know what i mean like he is a top tier fps gamer and he should be playing for someone especially for a team like that when they're struggling like the way they are they've i just beaten, think like he's yeah, gonna put up it's not their fault but they've only beaten one team this yeah year. i mean yeah. enable's it's gonna put time, up like, you try something else he's gonna put up the same numbers if not better than pander and his decision making is gonna obviously be better and that's no shot at pander just think about who you're comparing like you're comparing a multi fps champion who's won multiple titles in call of duty like this guy's like enables on a different level than him. And like, you're going to trust his decision making way more when it comes down to the wire. And when Surge did put themselves in great positions this weekend, like they did, it probably would have been nice to have a player like Enable who's one of those players who can take over a game randomly, right? Like, I don't, I haven't seen Pander do that. And like, at this point in, in Call of Duty, like on your team, you need to have every single player with that ability, like to be a championship team. Like I like an Empire Huntsman and FaZe and like every single player on any of those teams can like take over a game. And right now it's Surge doesn't have that. So when do we look at Nubsy being the problem for that team and not a player? It's true. I mean, did he make that decision? He probably most likely he did, right? I, yeah. I feel like he has a ton of control over rosters. I mean, well, even Gen G last year, you know? I so feel that's, like Go ahead. You know, I just feel like 
you know, if a team with those players like isn't performing well and you drop a player and they're still not performing well, like, you know, what is like, what's the problem then? You know, we were really bad with Brian Saint towards the end of his tenure. We yep. pick up Facento, become an immediately different team, although we did pick up Simp you at the same time. You picked up Simp at the same time. Nah, Bryce was a huge part of that. I'm, like, not, at, saying, I'm not saying that he wasn't, but you picked up Simp at the same time. Yeah. But I'm just – so exactly. So where is their opportunity to go get an amateur player and pick up a coach that can come in and straighten everybody out? And I'm not saying that Joey's a bad coach. I've never been coached by Joey. I don't know anything about how Joey coaches or his coaching style or any of that. I really don't. I just know Joey is a person. And so it's like I'm just asking the question, posing the question – when do you look at you know some of the best Call of Duty players of all time not performing? Like so, what the reason is? So let me chime in here. So there's something I've been kind of wanting to talk about at some point in the year, but it's like when does the community and players like start holding coaches accountable? Like in all sports and everything, coaches, GMs, and everything, there a lot of them are held accountable, especially if they are part of the construct of the roster and if they were given the opportunity and tools to make moves and a decision for the team that would make them better and it doesn't go well. So yeah, I mean, that's a great question. People haven't talked about that at all, but like, yeah, they made a move. And if he was at the core of that move and it hasn't panned out at all, it's like, yes, he should be held accountable as well as the players that were involved with it as well. Like it's just something that needs to be done. So yeah, uh, I think it is a good point to bring up. It's just hard for us to speak to it because we don't know like the moving parts of, of the organization and the team. Okay. I'm in a weird spot in that sense too, obviously, since we're going to bring this up. Let's, I'm a coach of a team. You guys team. haven't made a move though. I mean, is, that could also be part of it. Making a move could be part of doing the right thing. Not making a move could be part of it. I'm on a team that has players that have been at the top of the scene for a while now and we're at when we're not, right? So like I have to hold myself accountable. Yeah. I have to hold, just like Clay's doing for Joey, like how much of it is on me? What do I have to do to make sure that they can be better? Yeah, you have like a unique spot. So like, how do you like, obviously I'm not going to go in, but like if, if you're looking at your team, you know, five of the best ever play on paper, one of the best coming in this year. So like, is it a matter of like, they don't listen or like, you don't know what to say, or is it like execution or is it a combination Um, of everything? Like, what is it? You know, it could be both. I don't want to like talk about the inner workings of our team too much. Of course. Like that's not fair, but uh, I mean, it could be a combination of things. Sometimes I don't know what to say. That's, that's just the honest to God truth. Like if you're playing the game every if you if you're playing the every the game every day, you're gonna know more than there's no way that Rambo Ray is coming into your team and like telling you what to do in a situation. True, very it's, true. It's impo- there's no like you're not telling me that's the fact. It's impossible. Rambo's like like, hey, crack slide this corner, elite and kill a guy. <laughs> like, it's not happening. But you can try to like do your best to <laughs> to to make the team function as high as possible. But if you're not doing it the right way, like I don't know. In terms of moves. That's a different story because there's like so much that goes in behind the scenes between how players interact with one another, the chemistry behind the team, all that. That like, I don't know. Because I was, I, I don't want to bring up any private conversations, but I was there for some of the conversations that you had with Bryce or like when you guys were still like having whatever inner turmoil you had with the United, and like <laughs> managing that situation probably had more to do with managing the mental aspect of it than yeah. the X's and O's of being. That's huge, though. Call to be coach. Oh, I think it's probably the biggest part. It's huge, like on a so like if that's why I bring up the Nubsy thing is is important because when you have a roster like Surge and you have players like Enable and stuff, if the players have given up on Enable, then it's the coach's job to make sure the players don't do that, right? Like to rally them back together, and that's like a that's something that's very important, like for a team like that because Enable clear cut is better than than Pander, and he sh- he shouldn't have been benched, and like the proof is there. What everybody said. There's proof now. And so, yes, he should be held accountable for that at some point. And, like, for you, John, yeah, you too, bro. Your team stinks. Like, you guys got to figure something out. Like, you guys got to make a move. No shit. Like, You're a liar. He, <laughs> yeah, you guys got to make a move. And, like, like you can't – like, that's the thing. People can't demand stuff like that yet until the uh, opportunity presents itself for them to improve, until they make a change, until they do something, and then we see the result. Um, but, yeah, I have seen people saying stuff like that. Does that bother you, John, at all? What? No, I mean, people are always going to say, doesn't matter what you're doing, doesn't matter what you're doing or what industry you're in, if you're not winning, people are always going to come for everyone on the team's necks. Like, pe- I'm sure Clay's been playing and people have been coming for his neck as a player. Even so while winning. Come- yeah, it doesn't matter what time. you do. So, of course, that doesn't bug me. Like, And also, there's a certain level of internet trolls that happen. Like, they don't have any idea what's happening. They just <laughs> they have no clue. So, yeah, I mean, that doesn't bug me. What bugs me is losing. 
I don't give a shit what people say. And and I will say that like a lot of the stuff that I'm saying isn't stuff I know for sure. It's just speculation and it's just me speculating from my opinion on like what I see from the third person. I have no idea what their team comps sound like with Enable. Like maybe Ian was being a dickhead the whole time. Like, you know, maybe like he genuinely didn't enjoy getting on or wasn't motivated. Like all these, all these things that could have been that like I don't know about. And so I'm just looking at it from like a, as an opponent, you know? Yeah. And, and so it's, it's really hard to like say exactly <laughs> what is like like who deserves blame or who's not performing or who's not trying or you know whatever it is like maybe he like pack or joey isn't doing enough or maybe they're doing too much or maybe you know like it could be anything it really could be. this is speculation but it's good to do and it's like it's just like people do it right like we're going based on the information that we have and from the outside looking in it just seems like it was a bad decision but yeah let's move on past seattle um seattle make another change <laughs> uh, you played <laughs> you played Chicago after that. That was like the big matchup for you guys going into that series. They were nine and two against you guys. They had your number. They were living rent. Scump was living rent free in Crim's head. Ilian shots. He had their worst performances of the season against the Huntsman. But the last series was very close. You guys still lost three zero. How did what was your mentality going into it? Like I know you had the fire, but what did you do for the rest of the squad? And what what were their thoughts? Um. Dude, Porter brought it up to me the other day, but the whole rent free thing started as something else, if you guys remember. <laughs> I know it. And, and so, well, I'll leave it at that. But that's funny how it's now turned into this, um, like living rent free in Crim's head, because <laughs> rent free used to mean something else back in the <laughs> <laughs> back in the day. Um, you know, but like for real, um, I know how hard it is to play against like Scump and Formal, yep. and I I team with Alec for so long. Like I know how good these players are, and I also know how it feels being like a player who's never really beat them consistently. Like I know how it feels to like, just get smoked by them all the time and feel like, you know, I can't beat these guys cause they're so good. So I just, one thing I kept telling like who Shotzi and Illy was just like, guys treat them like they're like, they're, these guys are mortal. Like, and everybody heard all the stuff about them being in a slump and Alec went on, on a show and said like, we don't know how to play the game. Um, which I think, may have been a little bit of a mistake uh to go out and publicly say stuff like that because then we all heard that and we're like yo these guys don't know how to play the game just fucking <laughs> run it up on them you know like so um it, it's one of the things where i was just like don't think about who you're playing just think about how much better you are than them and just like have that delusional confidence have that just like you know i don't care that it's scump like this is you know I'm not going to name names, but like, this is, this is somebody that's trash, you know, like just see it, see it that way in your head. Because as soon as you get over that mental perception of like who you're playing against, it becomes a lot easier. And then like winning the first map, is just like, Oh, it, it, as soon as they feel that, like, as soon as my teammates are like, Oh wait, we can beat these guys. Like, Oh wait, we are better than these guys. It's not just like me being delusional. Like we actually can, um, it becomes so much easier. And then we kind of put on a clinic and S and D, uh, and then going in, I don't, first off, I don't know why they played Ramaza hard point against us. Like that's been kind of like their auto veto for a yeah, long time. Yeah, I don't know. They tried it. And that was the first time y'all played that against each other. Yeah. That's like, I mean, we don't play it very often either, but like when we saw they were going to let it in, we're like, Hey, we'll throw it up there. Like, you know, we don't think they're good at it. You went so. crazy on that map too. 27, 19, 1.42. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Um, <laughs> not bad. We, um, we have some good strats on that map and, and it lends to the crackhead style of play where like the subs can just like sprint up and down the stairs and the ladders and the doors and just like keep doing random stuff, you know? So, um, you know, then we put on the clinic and the gun runner S and D, which again, they left gun runner in, which is super weird. And then, uh, going into the third map was like hackney Dom where I, like, I, I wonder how long it's going to, I probably this next tournament, like people aren't going to let us play hackney Dom anymore. Uh, but you know, they let up it so many times in that map, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and we honestly like it's kind of ah never mind i'm not gonna say anything i don't want to give away too much but like <laughs> yeah people are gonna start being on that map versus that's for sure dude well you guys got a entire month to sit back and spectate so you can see what uh people are good at and what they're getting ready to play against you guys which should be pretty good having a month a month off competition by the way like i mean you're gonna be streaming daily pretty much anyways but well he's chilling bro yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, we are. We, our schedule is going to be light for the next week or two, um, and then we'll get back into it. But I think it actually it can hurt and it can help. Like it depends on how you use it and how you see it. 
Um, I think if we were to come into the next tournament with the exact same game that we played in the Chicago home series, like we're going to get demolished. I think we're going to have to evolve and add to our gameplay and kind of counter meta what we do and like what some people saw us do. Like we had one of the best bad sides of Hackney Dom you've ever seen like in this whole year. And I think a lot of people are going to start copying kind of what we did. And so we're going to have to start thinking of ways to like counter the count, like counter the copy, you know? And mm -hmm. if we effectively do that, then we're going to come out and win the next tournament. But like, if we just come into the next event with the same game that we just played with, I think we're going to lose. So it, it really just depends on how we use the time and how we, um, you know, strategize and how we get better throughout this next month, because we do get to watch like two tournaments and, and, all, and it's going to be awesome to sit with the team and watch these matches and like, mm -hmm. be like, Hey, you saw them do this. Let's steal that. Hey, they, you saw them do this. Let's steal that. Like, and, and so like, we can definitely use it in a good way, but I just hope we use it that way instead of like just sitting here and being like, Oh, we're the best. We just won, you know? Yeah. Which is, can always feel good. But I mean, I think you have Rambo Ray is going to make sure y'all are on point. That's something he's good for is like, just harmlessly texting the squad like, yo, guys, uh, let's get on and uh, go over this now. You know what I mean? Like, he keeps you guys on point. Like, he he's good at that. You know what I mean? <laughs> he texted us good morning the other yes. day. He's like, hey, See? good morning, guys. I hope we have a great scrim day today. Yep. And we got on and Porter goes, Ray, if you ever fucking text me at 9 in the morning again, I'm going to fucking block you. <laughs> See, Porter's a weirdo, man. I was like, yo, Ray, just text us on the side, bro. I loved having a good morning text from you, dog. <laughs> Yeah, I used to imagine Krim opening his phone and goes, who the fuck is messaging me? Vibrate, who the, what the fuck is going what on? What the fuck was that? <laughs> Rambo. All right, so let's address it. What do you say to the fans who, like, I'm sure if you've been reading the chat. Whoa, 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 John, 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 slow it down. We got one more match to go through, brother. All right. Yeah, all right. Well, all we, right. And, we, and I got another question for the last one, boy. You're jumping the gun, my brother. Yo, so Rambo Ray and you and Krim, the three head honchos of the roster, decided to veto the Texas host against the Huntsman. Many questions. I have questions about that. Did you do it just to, like, make them lose composure? Like, what was the plan there? Uh, I mean, I knew they were going to if we did. <laughs> like, I'm not saying that's a reason, but, like, we definitely knew, like, they're going to freak out if we do it. Um, well, the, the thing is, is, like, we had two North Centrals and a South Central. Those are the three, like, choices we had. And so Ender's in Toronto, Formal's in Cali, and then all the rest of us are in Texas. So it's like, if we play Texas, Formal's going to be closer to the host than Ender is. But if we play on like a North Central, like a Chicago or an Ohio, then Ender's going to be closer, and all of us in Texas are going to be on the same, and then Formal's kind of screwed. So it's like, why would we not take the advantage? You know, it's, it's like, funny because Formal had a one point fourteen, and Ender had a point eight, and, and Ender had I don't a point seven. Why wasn't there a like a, a more Western version? I don't know, but like that, we didn't we didn't decide that. So like I saw that. I'm, I'm not putting us on a Texas like, and then Formal ended up actually having the best series out of all of them. Yeah, so like and Ender had the worst. Matter. Ender yeah. had the worst. <laughs> so it, just, it didn't do anything. It didn't do anything, but they did lose full. I know no, it's that a yeah. it's a mental thing, though. I well, know. Well, our city's got smoke guys. in that series, bro. Our city's had a .75. I don't remember him getting shit on that hard. Oh, wait, what was that? He had a .75? Did he overall? Yeah. Did and he, that, over, that overall, it says KD, .75. Yep. Yeah, he did. Jeez, bro. Our city's got clapped in that series. I didn't even man, realize that. that that's that's not, man. It's going to happen like, from time to time. The, that's just one. Yeah. The one year I gave Alec the main AR and the three games we played together, we win playoffs and champs. It's all like there's very few people I would give main AR up for, and Alec is one of those people. Like, and I I know they tried the switch for formal and Alec, um, and Alec is like that's the thing is like he's a better sub than I am. So like even though I think he might be like like a little bit better main AR than I am, he was still a way better sub. So like we had to keep him on the sub in World War II. Like and then going into Black Ops Four. It's like, oh, I can use a Maddox. I don't have to use a sub. I can use like the in-between. So it's not like we're screwing us over and I give them the main AR. So it like worked out easier for us in Black Ops 4. Um, but it seems like they're running into the same issues yeah, that we kind of <laughs> ran into on, on the United team before I finally was like, all right, Alec, like you can run it this year, you know? Um, and, and it works. Like Alec is one of the best main ARs and he doesn't get to run it constantly because he's on a team with me. He's on a team with Formal. Like, you know, it's, it just sucks for him, dude. It's yeah, that does suck, man. He's so good as an AR too. I I need to go back and look at his stats when he was running an AR to see what he was doing and like, cause formal was getting long. 
whoever's playing that role like on their team just gets pooped on like formal got pooped on <laughs> like Al alex gets pooped on they, like, I mean, they're, both, they're both they just both have to go out of their comfort zone and run a, yeah. run a gun that they don't, they don't want to run and Alex Such is kind of formal with it just like clay just said so mm -hmm. he's the one that's run the sub and if you look at like you gotta like have a hierarchy of subs on your team like who's the main slayer sub on, on that chicago <laughs> team it's like seth probably and then who's number two and it's like probably gunless and then it's like who's number three and then it's like probably envoy so like you're running the fourth sub having to do like all yeah. of the bitch work yeah. like taking route man like whatever that is like you have to do all that stuff and it's honestly like you can't be in like a slaying role it's like a really niche like yeah. objective support kind of role and I don't I don't see Alec or formal being a support player you know they're not support players yeah and and also to that point like I, I get a lot of people asking me like do you think Chicago's done yada, yada. I'm like no they're fine like they still want a tournament they're gonna be okay they're a top three team in the game like they're absolutely fine they just lost and they need to go back and figure out what to do look at Empire they were not right. they were two and nine map count against them and they finally beat them like teams get better sometimes they get worse before they get better like that team will be absolutely fine Oh, uh, dude, like, that's it's true, crazy. Have different personalities. People that's do have different too. personalities. Some people can handle losing and, like, the, the whole getting better process better than others, where others, like, obviously, I'm, I mean, I'm just going to, Alec is one of those people who says, we don't know how to play the game as a team. Even though they're, points-wise, one of the best teams in the game, he's, he's trying to be the best. And he sees it, like, he sees their flaws, and it, it affects him differently than it would affect someone else. So you, you don't know how it affects each and every team differently because of that. It, it, that's true and it's crazy how hard it is to play for Seth's teams like when I was on optic when we were losing it's like the world is against you dude like all the fans turn like that like I read this uh, this 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 topic on reddit do you feel like scump is losing that burning desire what and it's got like a hundred up you know like if people actually like <laughs> it's absurd to me dude and I can't believe that people would even suggest like Huntsman making a change like yeah, bringing Jordan off the bench or something like, come on, man. Like those five players will get it together. Trust me, they will. And it's going to be tough to beat them when they do, which it's not like they don't like they're They're fine. <laughs> like they're fine, dude. Yeah, I don't right. know. Everyone's freaking out, dude. It's I crazy. mean, like, ah, it's just so I weird. Think that, I actually think that their season in AW specifically AW put their, their fan base in a weird spot because they got used to them winning, except for when they lost like the phase team. They got used to them constantly winning or getting second or whatever. And, like, that's not normal. Do you know how much talent is in Call of Duty nowadays? It is damn near impossible to consistently be in the finals. And yeah, they, I that mean, fan base just got so used to that, and it just lingered on forever. It's like every time they would have to struggle a little bit, it's like, what the hell is wrong with these guys? Blah, blah, blah. It's like it's just not that easy nowadays. It's not it – I wouldn't say it's easy then either. I'm just saying – It's cuts it, like an level. RNG game, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's weekend to weekend. A certain spawn, a certain spawn could just lose you this map, and you, and it's like, well, like well, I, mean, I stopped looking at this doorway right yeah. as it comes in. Like even though I stared at it for thirty seconds, like you know, it's there's so many little things. It's so hard to be consistently good. I mean, think back to those like doms right, you know? at the very end. If a couple of those doms go the other way in the final moments, like you got, like you could be in a way different spot right now. So it is, it's weekend to weekend, and that's why like clutching up in the final moments is huge. And like the top three teams, Chicago, Phase, Empire, like that's why they all have a chip and they all consistently are making it very far in these tournaments. It's just like whichever team turns up that weekend makes the right improvements prior, does the right vetoes. Like for to suggest Huntsman, Empire, or Phase, any of those teams at any point make a change would be just preposterous. Like that's insane. Um, a team really has to be shit in the bed in this league to be telling them to make a change. And Minnesota, I'll throw Minnesota. Good yep, Minnesota's good too. It, but they're consistently at the top of it, so I think that Minnesota deserves that love too. They just mm -hmm. had a one-one, but they've been there. Florida's yeah, looking. Right there. Florida's. Where yeah. do you guys put Florida? Like with the teams? Like, do you have them top four over Minnesota? No. Even. You don't. You still don't have them, even though like they look better than at the last tournament. Obviously, um, it's tough for me to say, dude. Like, obviously, I think us and Atlanta are like one and two, and you yeah. can argue who's one and who's two all day. But like, I feel like we're one and two, and then <clears throat> honestly, with how Huntsman showed a performance this weekend, like you might even consider putting Minnesota above them. But I wouldn't put Florida above them just because Florida hasn't shown enough. And they haven't been in this team. They haven't went to enough tournaments to really show enough. And it, it's tough for me. But, like, me personally, playing against Minnesota is very, very hard. 
Like their sub aggression matches our sub aggression. Adam plays really slow and just like post up heavy with the he's AR. He's good at this game. Yeah, he's so good. He's very good at this game. This is and his he best dominated game. us uh, in the Dallas home series. In the yeah. series we lost to them, he dominated yeah, us. Dude. He was nasty. And, and was shutting me down the whole time. So like playing against Minnesota is a lot harder for, for our team than playing against Florida or even playing against the Huntsman from that series. Like that's the first time we played Huntsman in like two months. No lie. Like they don't scrim us, they won't scrim us, and that's the first time we played them. So that's all I have to judge it by. But like, I feel like Minnesota is so good. I feel like Minnesota is like the third best team. Like no lie, and and that might just be my personal. So I don't know though. Like I think that they're just well rounded Minnesota. I think they're just well rounded from coaching staff to the players to the the hunger to win to like the chip on the shoulder type of players. Um, they're just all very, very talented. They seem like they have a really vibey team. Like their practice is yeah. is like is awesome. It seems like like they all like each other. Like have, that uh, Goddard X dude's a beast. It seems like they have a good team culture around them. Like yeah, they do. Uh, they said like if one of them is like a minute late, they find Goddard X like a certain. I don't want to say how much they find him, but they find him and he's just like a minute late. And like I'm like whoa, whoa, okay, that <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't work I mean, for your not- squad. <laughs> no, but I mean, <laughs> but I mean, it's it's a it's a good thing though. Like yeah. it just keeps you. It's not like you know what do you do? You show up on you show up on time and play Call of Duty. That's a pretty like in a normal job. If you're late that many times, you get fired. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, they have a great, they have a nice team culture going over in Minnesota. I like what the Minnesota organization is doing as well. I think they're doing it right, having the watch parties and stuff, and like you said, like finding players if they're late. Like it's it's good culture over there. Shout out to Cod MN, Gary V, bro, Chip, Brett Diamond. <laughs> but uh, anyways. So the online versus land debate, I have this written on here too. I want to talk about this. So a lot of fans obviously saying that this isn't a real chip, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of pros tweeting out frustrations, all that jazz. Like, what do you say to that? Like, what, what's your mentality with that? You just going out there trying to win? Like, what's up with that? Yeah, I mean, like, um, personally, if you, if like, I'm not adding it to my chip total. Like, you know, okay. how many championships have won? I, I'm not adding it to that. Um, they matter a lot. You know, just like 2Ks mattered a lot. Um, I think that, you know, it's all we have right now. So I think people need to understand it's not like the CDL did this or any of the players did this. Like, this is just the best we can do given the circumstances. And I think that, like, us as competitors are going to do our best. Like, you know, you heard the listen and you saw how hard we tried to win. Like, we're trying really hard to win. Every pro is trying really hard to win these tournaments. Yeah. Like, and I don't want anybody to get that twisted because every pro cares just as much about winning these tournaments as they would a land event because... The points matter a lot. And so if you just take that into account, like, yeah, like the the competitiveness is there. Um, but like, obviously there's going to be moments where somebody gets bullshitted or somebody gets joked or warriored or, or whatever you want to call it. Like there's plenty of kills I saw shots he have where I was like, oh my God, like <laughs> that's not, that's not happening on land. Like that is not happening on land. And that's about my own teammate. But like, that's how we've had to adapt our gameplay. I mean, I had to switch to iron sights. Uh, to play online like I had to you know speed up my gameplay a lot because I couldn't just stand still I had to abuse the connection abuse the ping abuse the cameras like you have to be moving and and I think that's the thing is like it's a different beast like online play is and I think that you know if if we're discounting online play completely then we got to go back 10 years and discount all these tournaments like frag cups and you know EGLs PCLs and, shit, and e- no. you know all this stuff like everything in modern warfare the 3, melbourne like, cup online you know like yeah th- there's so many things that um it- it's just it this it doesn't really matter like it- it's one of the things where we're trying as hard as we can to win and we're going out there trying to win and all the all the teams are trying to win so like although i might not personally count it as like a major championship and like it's it a championship add to the total, in my mind it matters. And like, you know, maybe I'll be persuaded if, if enough other pros who win these things start adding it to their chip totals, maybe I'll just throw it on there, you know, because it's like everybody else is doing it. But in my mind, um, nothing quite compares to being in front of a crowd and having the pressure of the crowd on you. I think, I think it's that, a chip. I think it's a chip play. I got to because the reason I think it's a chip is because you're still weathering the storm. Like, dude, we're all adapting to the situation that's going on in the world. And like, even, even though you're playing online, you're playing a ton of teams. Like you played optic Seattle, Chicago phase, like you're weathering the storm. You're getting through teams with players with incredible internet and everybody's trying to win these things. And there's bad blood between some of these teams. Like, dude, Weathering that storm and winning the, and winning that shit is not easy, bro. Like I, st- I, I count that as a championship, absolutely, one hundred percent. 
Like, and I've seen Shotzi getting some crazy kills, but guess what? I saw players on other teams getting crazy kills too. I feel Sim like killed me behind a wall in the one v one round eleven. <laughs> I don't know if anybody saw that. I was ten you feet behind the wall. Play. <laughs> yeah, I counted as chip. So, and I, <laughs> but like at the beginning of that round or that that like the very end of that round eleven, I would have killed him on land from that stair spot when he ran by when I made him one shot and then didn't kill him because it's online and then he killed me around a wall. Like so like there's so many things like that. It's just like ah man, like if it was consistent, you know, I would have won that round eleven. Yeah, and so also say. nice try, Clay. Simple nice try. <laughs> but and also like I just look at it and it's it's like the teams that were good like what was expected to happen kind of happened, right? So it's like, I mean, I guess outside of FaZe and Empire, but we hadn't seen them play in a while. So, like, maybe that match goes different, but who knows if those guys played against each other 10 times on land, it could go different ways all 10 times on land as well. So, like, I definitely count it as a chip, and I, I think that the Florida Championship was legitimate, and I think you guys should all put it to your chip count. What are your thoughts, all right, I'm Jared? adding it, and if anybody asks, um, dude, I'm saying you said I could. Absolutely, right? bro. Okay. Realistically, I agree with Clay. I wouldn't add it to a chip count, but everyone is going hard. Like, you don't add a 2K to your chip count. That doesn't mean that you weren't going your absolute hardest. In a it's not a 2K, though. Why do you compare it to 2Ks? To Wait, 2Ks were probably harder to win. You had no. to play oh, best of threes, maybe. You but play, like, thank you. You had to play 20 rounds to win. No, but it's way, you it's so much different. You can, you can lose a round in this. It's so much so, different, though. It's a big, big broadcast. Is, uh, like, it's I will like, say it is different. the broadcast that has nothing to do with the actual I mean, the legitimacy of the competition, like the legitimacy of a 2K is not even comparable to a homestand. Like, what? That's like, like teams, like these are teams' homestands. Like, I think. I'm not calling it a 2K. I'm not calling it a 2K, first of all. That's not what I'm doing. But I'm, I'm comparing it to like, to what a 2K is. You get on, you play different teams over and over in a round by round basis. That's Yo, awesome. but no, it's different though because like you know who you're gonna play, you can prep for it and get ready, and it's you like know who you're gonna play in the first round. Okay, still and like you know you could prep for your group. An option in the next two. You could, pre but and you can map out what's gonna happen, John. You, going you can map out forward. what's gonna happen, John. There's two groups. You know, like who's probably gonna win, and you know who you're probably gonna play if you make it to that position, and you can prep for your matches. So like, I think it's completely different in a 2K. I can't believe you'd make that comparison. That's that's okay. that's that's you blast. Asked me what I thought. I'm not gonna have this argument. I don't want to talk about it like this. This is a, this is a ridiculous argument. I don't Wait, care. what? Every okay. team is going super hard. I'm to just win. trying to make the I argument love, that it's a chip. I would like, love for my team to have won this online tournament. Say whatever you want, but like it feels great to win. Way. I will say exactly. that exactly. It probably, it probably feels fucking amazing to win. That's great. That's all. That's all that matters. I'm not gonna say anything that's gonna get me in trouble with anyone uh, above. I wasn't like, trying it, to do that. I'm what, just trying to argue. This is what we're given. That it's a chip. So all we're given is these matches. Dallas played these matches. They won these matches. Congrats to Dallas. That's all you can do going forward, period. Whether or not they add it to their chip count, which everyone will later on in life, because that's what always happens. People always say, like, oh, yeah, that Australian tournament didn't count. And then, like, four <laughs> years later, they have, their chip counts just, like, doubled. You're like, where the, where the fuck these come from? Listen, dude, at the end of the day, that's you could happens. say so during quarantine. On, they will add this to, to the thing. The money still counts, which is the most important thing. That's true. And there you go. And we move and on with point, life. And the points, and the points count still too. count the same. Exactly. Yeah. So that's all we're doing. We're Whatever. Situation, Who cares about a chip count, bro? It's it's dub is dub. Team's improving. That's good. Yeah, that's feet. all that matters. Have we even talked about the finals yet? Oh uh, no, we didn't. Let's get into it, brother. Let's kick it off. So, how was it? Like, uh, when's the last? Have you guys played phase? In it? I don't think you played phase prior to that. Yeah, we played them twice. Oh shit, I'm delusional. At, at launch, at launch weekend, we got smoked, and then at oh, yeah, uh, yeah, LA, yeah, we launch. got smoked. The event we won, we got <laughs> smoked by them. Let me look up at the stats to that one. No, nah, please don't. I want to see what was going on there. This match was, uh, it was, it was a good match. I mean, starting off on that Gunrunner hard point, like, I was just worried for you guys. But I was like, Shh, looks like FaZe is going to fry these guys. But ended up going your guys' way. Yeah, That's I crazy. think that um, I know how uh, Crowder's teams play. I, I feel like I've been playing against, like, the Crowder's team uh, for a long time now, even when he was playing on phase, it was still his team. Um, and, and they just have a certain way that they play where it's very aggressive, but very correct in a way. Like they're always going to be in your face, but they're also always rotated. And, and so it provides this weird balance that you kind of just have to match them toe to toe. Like you can't give them an inch on either side. Like you can't give them free scrap and you can't give them free rotations. Like you just got to win your gunnies uh, with the correct amount of split people. And and I think that's that gun runner. Um, a couple crucial moments uh where really phase could have could have tied it and, and like taken the lead and then 
we end up breaking the last 20 seconds and kind of extending our lead a little more and just extending and extending and extending until the very end when we held rotation at P2 and were able to win uh, in the last, like, I think it was like 250, 220 or something like that. So it's, that's how you have to beat those kind of teams. That's how you have to beat FaZe. You just got to edge them out. Well, damn, helping the fucking whole community, bro. But also, I will say, I think I forgot that you guys played FaZe because you guys got fucking bopped off the stage the last time you played them, bro. <laughs> it was, it was a Smoke 6-0 S&D, 188, 118 in Dom. Damn, dude, you guys came out with the fire in the series. Did you even play the same maps? It was a completely different map. I'm trying to see. Hmm. Yeah, they've uh, they've been they've been smoking us, but we've gotten a lot better. We've gotten a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot better. Yeah, a was better. was like your veto strategy against them? Did it change a lot? Because it's looking like in this series, it was completely different maps. Yeah, no Arklov, no Hackney Hardpoint. Guess you really can't go into that. The yeah, I mean, one. um, they surprised us in the veto process, honestly, and mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't understand how much the coin flip matters this year. Dude, it matters coin, a lot. The coin flip <laughs> is so important. So before every series, we do a coin flip, and we don't even get to call heads or tails. It's just predetermined. <laughs> Your heads and your tail. And no lie, we, we did the math. We're like, we've won four coin flips out of like 16 series this year. Sheesh. And, and like, yeah, we've been getting it. bodied, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to start asking for that. Like, who wins the coin oh. flip? It's good. No, dude, it's it always matter. It actually does matter. It's, Everyone that's involved in the veto process will tell you it's actually super important. Very important. And um, they end up winning the coin flip on us. And they kind of surprised us with some of their vetoes. And um or maybe chicago i can't remember it's either us or chicago one of the two we won the coin flip i can't remember which one it was but i just remember atlanta surprised us in the vetoes and and realistically we ended up playing some of the maps that we were like uh, i hope this goes okay <laughs> <laughs> like, it, and obviously it did um but uh it was one of the things where against the best teams in the world it's always it like you're gonna have to grind it out, and I think we showed that in the Gunrunner Hardpoint mm -hmm. and the Saint Petrograd S and D. I mean, that was probably the be one of the best S and Ds ever. Like just like going down to the time limit every time. Bro, that just, like, search 1v1s, 1v2s. was incredible. Like start to finish. If you guys haven't seen that, you gotta watch that shit. That shit was wild. Yeah, it was um, it was crazy to play. Like we were, we were out of sorts sometimes, and I honestly was pretty upset because I could have won us the game in like round nine or 10 when I was shooting priest in the back. And I was like, mm -hmm. Porter, go plant a, like go to the left, go plant a, like priest is there. Simp is a sniper. Like they're both mid map. And he's like, nah, I heard a door open. I'm going to plant B. <laughs> and and then we rewatch the broadcast. Nobody was a, they were both mid map at B. And um, <laughs> they, and there was just a bunch of moments that um, we grinded it out. They ended up winning in a one V one round 11. And then, uh, you know, and the same thing on the Hackney. We grinded it out uh, on the second side of the Dom. And then the St. Patrick got a hard point. Same thing. Just grinded it out. Kept grinding it out until the very end we could close out on the on the P5 hill. So uh, that's just, like, how you beat those teams, man. You just got to keep grinding. Got to keep, like, stay just going at it. You know, like, you just got to stay in the game until the end and then clutch up. That's how you beat the best teams in the world. Stay in the game until the end and then clutch up. That's it. Yeah, and Illy hitting some snipes. That's and, hard uh, to do. It's pretty hard to do. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy it's definitely not because like one hill in this game can flip everything dude like one full 60 and it's just like oh shit dude like we're getting like one full 60 and they flip you it's over like one the game is over into a blitz play and you're just like everyone, fuck everyone bro we're in this position composure. once again it's like oh go. shit How, <laughs> it's gonna be a miracle if we come back in this one boys everybody knows that feeling bro that shit sucks <laughs> it does suck they flipped us out p3 at one point on saint petro hardpoint and you're and I was just like, like oh, fuck, fuck dude. you know that oh, you know that one spot you get in in scrims you're just like oh this map's over fuck but in like the actual term you're like i actually can't just talk <laughs> it now <laughs> like i gotta actually go hard right now yeah. <laughs> like and some people go what the fuck did we just do yo right <laughs> You're up, two one. you're up 2-1 you're up 2-1 you're up 2-1 and you're on game four and you're like fuck bro oh, looks like it's probably gonna go game five this is all going super fast in your mind be like dude if i just go dumb hard right now i maybe can clutch up and end the series <laughs> it never happens bro never happens you always lose that shit well at least yeah, I, I just started i started getting smoked and luckily i have the kids you know and i was getting tucked at heart that petro hard point dude and thank god they they were going off <laughs> Let me check it. Let me check it out, bro. I have the stats on hand, bro. <laughs> I don't even know if the stats were bad. I felt oh, I was 17 and 20. Was... You were all right. Yeah. <laughs> As a main AR. Uh, Come on, man. A uh, BZ got deep fried on that map. 
Let's see. Major Maniac was frying. Yeah. Yep. Barista had a pretty tough series, if I recall, against us, which was very abnormal from him. Um, well, I just felt like it. I don't know. Yeah, he just, did. Yeah, he did. Him and Abizi had a tough series, and and Simp. They all did. All three of them got kind of fried. Selium went off. Uh, Hook went off. Hook and Shotzi both went off in that series. At least statistics. I mean, it's four maps like that. Sample size is so small to like. Like that's like yeah. a couple decisions in game, you know, where it's like you're you're biting the bullet and you just start dying. It's hard to like take stats from one series. But yeah, dude, congrats on that championship. Uh John, there was uh one Thanks, wasn't there a question you wanted to ask at the end of that? Uh, that I stopped you from asking earlier? I don't remember. No, nah, we we've addressed that. We've addressed that. Okay. The online. The online thing. All right, bet. So let's talk about the next event coming up. Just like quick, quick predictions of Florida event. So you're not in it. Who do you think's getting to that final, bro? So uh, let me link you. Who's in it? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna link you. I'm gonna link you what, right what now. What other teams aren't there? Right? Yeah, you're just like. Well, so it's there. Phase, Mutineers, Royal Ravens, Rocker, Subliners, OGLA, Legion, and Ultra. Uh, but the groups are here. Let me uh, I'm gonna put a link in the chat so for. Is the Dallas chat. the only the only like quote unquote top team that's not in it? Is Chicago there? Uh, Chicago's not there. Neither is Dallas. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Okay. Um, but the groups are Group A is Toronto, New York, Florida, and Minnesota, and then the other group is Paris, Atlanta, OGLA, and London. So I think Group A is like a lo like harder than Group B. I just think Group B, like London and Atlanta, are like the clear favorite, and Group A, it's like Toronto, New York are a toss up, and Florida, Minnesota is like kind of a toss up as well. Wait, Toronto, New York. If you were just going off like recently online, New York actually. One of the best teams. Wait, the Mac Belts was different, bro. <laughs> we did not. I'm telling, I'm telling you, like they just didn't. They didn't close out what they needed to, but they also had a really tough. Who they lose to? Like Atlanta and Chicago. Yeah, they should have yeah. beat Atlanta, bro. They beat Chicago, lost to Atlanta, lost Chicago. I'm, t yeah. I'm telling you, like if they just could perform like how they do in scrims. Yeah, I was actually about to say I predict New York's <laughs> going to win that event. If it's what? not phase, it's, Wait. if it's not phase, it's New York. You think New York's going to win that? Uh, like if it's not, if it's not phase, it's New York, dude. Whoa. They're dude. They are actually disgusting. New York is like very good. Like I'm surprised they didn't beat Atlanta, and I'm surprised they didn't beat Chicago. Um, that blows my mind, dude. I don't know. They just have this style of gameplay where it just feels like they're always in the right spots and they're always in your face. Like Yo, they're Revan, just everywhere all the time, dude. Like I don't know what it is about New York or what they've done in the past month, but like plus scrimming them makes me want to pull my hair out sometimes. Like, I genuinely get super frustrated playing against them. It's Thanks Warzone, dude. It's made them way better. Big shout out to Warzone. <laughs> yeah, that and some kid named Mac Melts. <laughs> Yo, some he's guy. so good. Some kid. Yeah, some like. Kid. <laughs> he's really good, dude. He incinerates, <laughs> though. Where's the cold Zara tweet? Sitting in his room, chilling, drinking a Coke. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> For real, a lot of people are good like that, bro. For real, for real, chilling in the in the chilling in the in the in the DX racer, bro. That's if you get up and smell his cherry faint. Yeah, dude, that guy's mom, different. His mom drops off a sandwich and he, bro. Dying, it's bro. easier for me to play. I'm hitting my vape in between maps, like yo, the camera I'm hitting it, bro. I'm like yo, yo, same thing. Like I'm 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 doing my segment. I'm walking out to the living room, posting up on the couch, watching y'all go at it. I'm like, this is the life. What the heck is going on? Like, yo, this is legit, dude. Yo, but uh, that has got to be nice though. Like, you just be like at a, in the middle of a tournament and just be like, all right, bro, I don't, I'm gonna be right back. Like, I don't gotta talk to you motherfuckers right now. <laughs> just, walk, <laughs> just walk away. Yo, Krim, listen, we lost the map. Like, chill, bro. I'll be back when the next one's loading up. <laughs> no, it's, it's the super losing, nice, the losing dude. Losing online is weird. Like, at least when you lose on land, you like have to you're forced to like speak to each other and then walk your separate directions. But <laughs> online, you're in team speak. You're like, I'll be back. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, after I lost oh, the 1v1 yeah. to Sim, dude, I was so mad, and I kept bringing it up, and like, dude, I should have done this, should have done that, and then like, my team's like, just get over it, dude, and so I muted my mic and just scream. Like, you can't do that on land, bro. Like, I, I, like, I muted my mic, screamed, and then unmuted it, was like, all right, I'm good, let's go. It's like, on land, if I do that, they're all like, what the fuck, dude? Like, this guy lost bro. Like, <laughs> Jesus, dude. Yeah, on land, I would look over at you, and I'd be like, we are chalked up, my brothers. Yeah, like, it's over. It's over. <laughs> Dude, it's over. But it helped. I, it helped me get over it. You know, I just needed to like yell for a second. Yeah. You know? That's good. That's good. <laughs> All right, yo, John. So who you got? So he's got New York for Group A. Uh, I think LA. Like what? Well, I said Group A. <laughs> oh, what's what's Group A? Toronto, New York, Florida, Minnesota. 
Toronto, New York. Wait, to, New who, York to, what two are coming Florida, out? Oh, New York and Minnesota. Damn, bro. Hmm. I'm going to go Toronto. They're going to beat New York, bro. Toronto and Minnesota. I'm going those two. And then Atlanta and London, From bro. From two people who are involved in the scrimmage daily, I'm telling you that you are picking a hefty underdog. All right, watch, bro. Toronto's about to win. <laughs> Shout out, Zinni. Do you want to win? No, but New York looked a lot better this weekend. I, I think it's uh, I think it's going to be closer than you guys think. I mean, maybe maybe you guys scrim them. Maybe you know more. They could just be scrim warriors, but their hard point looked pretty good this weekend. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, Toronto looked a lot better too, though, when I saw them play. Yeah, Toronto's improved, but I, I just know from playing New York that if they play at their highest level, their that their highest potential is just the, mm. their ceiling's higher than Toronto's. That's all. Mm. Well, that we uh, covered everything. We covered everything I have listed. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Uh, and we got clown of the week at the end. But before we do that, um, is there anything chat wants us to speak on? Yeah, any questions for Clay chat before we go to the clown of the week? And also, you guys can try to guess who's clown of the week. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be super hard. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Before, actually, I want to talk about Warzone a little bit. Have you been playing Warzone, Clay? Warzone. Yeah, yeah bro. quite a bit. What do you mean? Quite we got to talk about it, John. It's huge. Bro, Warzone. COD being... Wait, yo. Having these streamers on COD is actually crazy. Like Nick Merckx, Dr. Disrespect, Symphony... Like Nate's playing again. Like all these guys on every single day is wild. Have you been taking a look at the directory at all? Yeah, recently? It, it would be nice to have like the COD League and the top two rows with all these people, so people could just <laughs> click on that and watch competitive COD. You know, it'd be super nice. Like just amazing cross pollination. You know, <sighs> maybe I just think maybe when you load up Warzone, there should be a button like, "Do you like Call of Duty?" Well, CDL's <laughs> here. That would be cool. I'm still waiting on drops, man. Like what? Valorant did with the drops and all these other games doing with like Twitch drops are crazy, dude. I wish COD had drops, bro. That would just change that change the game, dude. COD's already massive, like on Twitch right now. Like if we had drops, it'd be fucking crazy. Not Wait, did saying you, a word. Did you guys see the esports tab on Twitch? What? Where's that at? Wait, there's um, an esports tab on Twitch. That's is that a, oh it's it's new. Whoa, I just looked up and there was an esports tab. Wait, what? that just tweaked me out. Are you see being dead ass? <laughs> Uh, on my Twitch, there is. Following yeah, oh, the there is, bro. Yo. And one of the guys asked, um, we don't get to see the personality of Hook, Ilya, and Shotzi. Can Clay talk about it? Yo. Like they Clay, play hold up. What? Real, before, go to Twitch, click esports, and click Modern Warfare. It says pro streaming live. That's dope. And it's like all the pros live. Krim, yeah, cool. Priesta, App, Attach, Zoom. That is sick as huh. fuck. That's actually pretty see. cool. Wait, would I be on there? I'm not on there. That's bullshit, bro. <laughs> You're not a pro, bro. Oh, uh, for years, brother. Like, come on now. Dude, that is sick, dude. Let's see if Wait, I go. That down. is actually a really cool tab. Yeah, that's really cool. What about Fortnite? Let's see who's on here. I mean, we don't give a fuck about Fortnite. Yeah, that's really cool. It does it for all the you can select any game. That's dope, dude. I wonder if it'll be used. All right. Well, thank you for that. Whoever's in the chat yeah. posted that. Well, what I was what I was saying about the yeah. question. Um, we've been trying to get Hillary, Gilly, and Shotzi on camera more. We've been trying to do some more stuff to let you guys know because I honestly think we have one of the funniest teams in the league. Like, if people could hear our comms or get to know like us as people and how we interact with each other, I think like everyone would love those kids. Like, they they're all unique in their own way. Like, Illy is super smart. Was like a chess champion. And he's just like really intelligent, you know, and like Shotzi, he, he's really game intelligent, but like has no common sense about real life things, you know, and Kyler's just like so soft spoken, but hilarious because he just throws daggers like all the time. dude. Like it's a really weird mix of, of players because like they all have their own unique quite like traits and qualities about them that make them like who they are and make them good call of duty players so like we've been trying to get them on on camera more and trying to get them to do more stuff because i really think if they Whoa. opened up a little more to the community a lot of people would love them well i totally agree and i think you're doing a horrible job with that because i hit up hook like four <laughs> times to come on the podcast and he says no every time so, so so uh i think that's awesome that you're trying to get them in front of the camera i salute you but uh kyler if you're in the chat or something like come on bro well, it, it's your time to come through. And yeah, dude, why does Krim do every interview? Why did he do every interview? Um, I don't know. They, they just like, we asked like, who's doing the interview? And they're just like, Krim, 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 <laughs> Krim. So I, I, mean, I don't know. Krim or Clay, right? His interviews are goady, bro. I don't know when he got, he had the worst interviews ever back in the day. And now they're just the best. Shit has me dying, dude, every time. It, it's funny. Um, 
their reaction to Krim too, because like you know how Porter is. Porter mm-hmm. just like yells at them all the time, pretty much. Uh, yeah, and like freaks out. And like me, I know Porter. I know he's just trying to get us better. And I, I, I think they know that too, or else they would <laughs> they would have a big problem with it. But like the other day, Ant chirped back at him for the or Shotzi is Ant. Um, he he chirped back at him for the first time ever since we've been teaming. And he's like Porter, like. Why do you got to get on and make it not fun every day? <laughs> and I was like, I kind of agree with that, dude. Like, just relax a little. It's his crib, you know. He's like, I got 90 minutes sleep. I'm like, all right. He's just tired, bro. <laughs> like, it's okay. Dude, um, I played Warzone but- with Crim the other day, and he goes, yeah, I'm staying up all night uh, up until scrims. <laughs> <laughs> what? Guy's focused. He's just yeah. turned, dude. He's crazy. <laughs> Dude, he's at new levels. He's oh, loving man. this quarantine, bro. So, he's loving like, it. Someone asked, how did the Empire Squad get brought together? Um, I've talked about this a few times, but I'll yeah, go over it again. Um, looking for this guy. Yeah, I uh, I was talking to a bunch of franchises. Uh, my main focus was being on a good team. I wanted to be on with players. I wanted to team with me. I wanted to be with good players. Um, Hook approached me saying him, Illy, and Shotzi were a team of three. And this was even before Shotzi got bought out, out of Splice. And they were just like, Ant's not playing for Splice. He's playing for Envy regardless. Uh, and so I was like, okay, like, I'm down. Like, let's do it. And they're like, you pick our fifth. We don't care who it is. Like, you pick it. And so I'm like, okay. And then, like, the next day, Porter got announced that, like, they were not, he was not teaming with Seth and them. And I immediately called him. He's like, oh, I've already called Hastro. Like, I'm on y'all's team already. <laughs> and so it was just like quick, quick, quick. Like in a week, we were all on the team, and it was like we were all happy with it. So it went pretty quick. Well, that's dope. Worked uh, out well. Any other questions Splice in the chat, guys? Big mistake. Wow. What? I'm they sorry. paid buku bucks for him, bro. Like for an unproven <laughs> COD player. Nah, like Splice got the bag for Shotzi. Trust me. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, because yeah, he was on the Halo contract. Yeah. And yeah. so like his buyout was a lot. <laughs> it took some convincing. That's to say the least. I'm glad that he turned it around after Minnesota because Stro might have freaked out a little bit if he didn't. <laughs> Best player in the game, no bias. Somebody asked. Got her, X. Nice. Nice try. He's up there for sure. He's good. He's very good. But if he's picking who, who, it, who, who, it was he big, said, that, was that was an instantaneous nice try. That was such, <laughs> <laughs> such clay poo gaze that just came into my ear like, God, or X. Get the fuck out. If he's, <laughs> I guarantee that was a clay statement to too. Pick a team, he was not going to pick God or X. It's because clay doesn't want to give anybody confidence. The same thing you said earlier about the RCD statement. You well, can't ask clay point. questions like point. that, guys. You can't. <laughs> you guys know me. Come on now. The fuck out of here. I knew you were gonna. I thought you were gonna say some book like assault or something silly. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Well, I mean, eh? they're clearly not the best they're, players in the game. They're, they're, I just thought that you were gonna say somebody not the obviously not the best, but just to answer it. But God Rex is like a question. I was like, oh, maybe he does truly think that. <laughs> he must like maybe he just fucks Clay up. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what team should try to trade for Prestini? Ooh, Optic Gaming one. LA. Yeah, Preston for uh Honestly, <laughs> I think that <laughs> Seattle I think <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying nothing, dude. I think Seattle <laughs> could use Preston too. Uh I, I think, think so I too. think he would help Octane out a lot. Um and they could honestly Preston, make we could do it for two different people too. Honestly. Preston is a unique individual that I think, you know, if you had asked me this question a year ago, I'd be like, nobody should. Um, but I think after winning champs and winning playoffs and being in the position he is and coming into his own as a person and as a player, he's like confident in himself now. And I think that does crazy things for Preston's gameplay. I think that like any team should be, if they're looking to make a change, should be hunting for Preston right now because like he's got the chip on his shoulder. He's got the confidence from, ju- he's like, he was the defending world champion and he's not starting on a team right now. The next season, like that's absurd. Mm-hmm. He should be on a team right now. He should be playing for a team and getting better. I think people are making a big mistake if they overlook Preston. I agree. John, would you pick up Preston in your team? Give him the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you can't ask me questions like that, bro. Come on. All right, my bad. All right, I think that's it for the question segment of the chat. <laughs> so, guys, did you guess the clown of the week? So, we have a weekly clown here on this show. 
And we have a massive clown this time, bro. You it can't get much massive. worse than this. Well, I didn't mean it like no that, dude. Too, dude brother. I just meant Come like on. this was. Come on. I just meant that this was like a huge <laughs> blunder. That's fucked up. Dude. You can't. Hey, man. Hey, man. Listen, my dude. Yo. Had to play the air horn real quick. Brum, 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 brum. <laughs> The weekly clown and I announced this week is Parasite. Unfortunately, there has been some breaking news and Parasite in on his amateur team. He was in the DMs of his teammates, girlfriend. Uh, that's just you can't let that happen, man. Like, I've never dealt with anything like that on any of my teams. John, have you? Clay, have you? Has anybody? No, because that is psychotic. <laughs> Any of my teammates are ever DMing my girlfriend, I'm cutting them instantly. I'm 100%. Like, instantly. Instantly. And I'm beating the shit out of whoever. Before we started the podcast, <laughs> people, people were making fun of, um, was it Zapchus for like, for whatever. But I was like, in my head, he has pretty great composure for going on and getting second place in the Challenger event. No yes. one that was happening. Absolutely. It is kind of weird like, that he would like want her to bait him into it though. That's, like he, that's that is weird. That's the devil's advocate side of it. Weird. But no matter that what, amateur, that's no, an amateur. Also, no, but no matter said, like, what, he just wanted to. He wanted to see what Haggy was. Come oh, on, yeah. Haggy's been at this since everyone knows what Haggy's <laughs> doing if he's in your yeah. girl's DMs. Yeah. But also, oh but also, like no matter what, like the way I think about it though is like, is is if you're Haggy. You're trying to build your way back up and get back onto a pro team. Like, this is your livelihood. This is your career. And you talk about it all the time on Twitter, what you're trying to do, and the path that you're on. Like, why even take that fucking risk? How many times have you been screenshotted and put it's on Twitter? It's hella horny, bro. Listen, listen. <laughs> How many times? How many times? Come on, man. I don't buy the, – the worst part to me – well, obviously, you shouldn't do this. Everyone knows this. This is, this is obvious. You should not do that. But – the worst part to me is that as soon as he got dropped, he went to Twitter and started playing the victim role. Dude, that which okay. he's been doing yeah, that's since one. 2000 and like seven. I'm I, no kidding. Like the same victim role, and that is where I draw the line. Like everyone makes mistakes. We're all human. Every one of us has done things that you shouldn't do. But to go immediately to Twitter and try to get them on your side, why would you do that? Because those guys were not gonna release why they dropped him. They just made it ten times worse. But then he's trying to get the public to attack his teammates, which they were already doing, and that's what made them lose composure. Like, what? You know why you got dropped? Like, they dropped me for vibes, I guess. If you want someone who's better than everyone on your team, pick me. If I was him, I would have owned up to it. I've been like, yeah, bro. I thought like I could just spit. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I thought your girl was bad, and I wanted to spit game, bro. I'm sorry. That's it. Like, if he owned it, fell in love, bro. Yes, if he owned it, it would have been better. But he didn't own it. Like, he should have just been like, hey, bro. I thought she was. I thought she was with it. Like, but he didn't. He didn't own it. So it made it worse. And then he played the victim. It made it even worse. Like to your point, Ant, like he for years has been trying to like build up back up into the yes. pro scene. And he gets right there and then something happens and yep. it just falls back. And it's usually self-inflicted and, yep. and he does the same thing over and over. And like, I actually like Chris as a person. Like I've Love had him. conversations with him. Like, I think he's a good friend of mine. Like, you know, like he's one of those people that I've known for over a decade. Like it, it's just like, he gets to the point and then does something like self-destructive and then it, it just restarts again. And it's like right here. He's on like the second best challenger team. And he's like probably going to start getting some offers in the next couple of months. If like teams need a player. Well, like, think about expansion, well. Clay. Think about expansion. Yeah, the exactly. league is, what if the league he's, expands over the next few years? He's right there. He's and then there. does something as stupid as DMing his teammate's girlfriend mid tournament. Yeah. Like he said he was lonely, Clay. I mean, I'll, I feel you know. for him in that regard, but like, yo, yo, I, yo, I, like you got homies, you got homies out there. Wait, you got there's also, also like 99% of other girls would be okay to DM. Yeah. You yeah, know, download t Yo, listen, hey, listen, 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 listen. Like, download yeah, Tinder, yeah. man. Like get Bumble or something. Some eSport teams follow yeah. spots by Bumble. Like download Bumble, <laughs> put some pictures on it. Like put some filters on it. Put a bio. Like, listen, three, like say People great personality. You know? Yeah, like I got a great personality. I live in California and like I'm hip to the game. Like I don't know, just put some shit in there. Listen, <laughs> is that is that what they say nowadays? I have no idea. I was just trying to come up with something off the rip and I I was terrible. But listen, honestly, that's what he needs Yo, to do. Oh, wait, he needs hold to download up. Tinder. All you people hating on the on the OnlyFans stuff, y'all need it. What the hell? That's get a that's a free get, that's that's good. Girls get your bread. Like everybody on the in the in the chat acting like you wouldn't have an OnlyFans if you could make thousands of dollars every month. 
you know, yeah, get the fuck out of here, bro. Yeah. If I could post pictures of me with my shirt off and make thousand bucks every month, I'm doing it. Oh, 100 percent. If I could make like 10k off like feet pics, dude, I'd be in there. One million percent, bro. Oh, yeah. You guys are freaks. You wouldn't. No my feet for till 10k. Wait, John, you wear flip flops all day long, all day, every day. Your feet are just there, like for free, for the free. People do have to stop attacking that girl, though. Like she just. What's wrong with that girl? What did that girl do? I don't know. I don't even know her whatsoever. Never I don't had know a conversation either. with her, but like I just know that the internet is just a mean place sometimes. I do know. Never mind. I won't get into it. <laughs> I, 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 we've seen stuff on the TL before. All right. But Wait, that was a fault. great day of Twitter, though. A great day of Twitter. <laughs> I will say. Why is there a BBC chat in my thing? Right, this it's going. We're going what? way off the rails here. Somebody put BBC in my chat, like an emote. I was like, is that a Twitch emote? <laughs> <laughs> you see that? <laughs> like, why does he have that? All right, guys. Listen, since this has gotten way out of hand, yeah, we we spiraled here a little. We're bit. We're gonna wrap the stream up. Like, there's BBC emotes getting put in the chat, and Clay's like, you guys are getting freaky. For money. Yeah, Clay's talking about starting up his OnlyFans. Yo, if like, you want to subscribe to me, hit me up on the Twitter, bro. I'll, yeah, I got you on the the personals, bro. <laughs> Yo, Shady know. goes, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Yo, wait, speaking of that, the last thing I'll say about OnlyFans, Rich uh, Campbell made an OnlyFans, and I remember when he was telling me about when he was making it, and he only posted pictures of ceiling fans. Fucking idiot, dude. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you will subscribe to it. It was just a bunch of ceiling fans, bro. What an, he's so weird. But, Clay, yo, big thank you for coming on, dude. It's always a vibe, brother. Much love, man. Of course, man. Thanks for having me again, guys. Yo, John. Once again, bro, yes, it was lit. We'll see you guys next week. Everybody in the stream, make sure you follow it. Everybody watching on YouTube, make sure you leave a like. And everybody on iTunes and Spotify, much love. And I hope you have a good listen. Everybody, take it easy. Peace. Peace. Peace.